if I had a medal, I'd give it to each of you now, because I know for some of you, it's tough to get to church, especially some of you with little kids. I can relate. So anyway, the Lord bless you. We're just glad that you're here, and we believe that God has something special for every person that comes into his house. There is a word, there's a encouragement, there's a blessing that has been waiting in the heart of God that will be poured out upon you today. I do believe that. So as we open our hearts to the Lord, we know that uh, he will uh, open his heart to us. So I invite you to pray, and then we're going to sing. Father, we love you today, and we invite you to always, as always, be the most honored guest here. We pray that you would manifest your presence. We ask that you would speak to us, that you would encourage us and nourish us, nourish us but our desire is to minister to you. And so we come seeking your face even before we seek your hand. We want to love you and honor you and praise you for the wonderful Father that you are, the wonderful Savior that you are, Lord Jesus, the amazing uh, Spirit of truth and Spirit of God that you are, Holy Spirit. We honor you today, triune God. We thank you for being so faithful to us. And we say, be glorified in this time today as we celebrate you in your house. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's sing. Have you heard of the one called Savior? Have you heard of his perfect love? Have you heard of the one in heaven? Have you heard how he gave his son? Because I have found this love. And I believe in the sun. Show me your way. Jesus, you are my best friend. You will always be. Nothing will ever change that. Jesus, you are my best friend. You will always be. Nothing will ever change that. in the one called Savior. I believe he's a risen one. I believe that I'll live forever. I believe that the King will come. Cause I have found this love. And I believe in the Son. Show me your way. Jesus, you are my best friend. You will always be. Nothing will end change that Jesus you are my best friend you will always be nothing will ever change that Jesus you are my best friend you will always be nothing will ever change that Jesus you are my best friend you will always be nothing will ever change that Jesus, lead on.
destined to die, poured out for all mankind. God's only Son, perfect and spotless one. He never sinned.
worship you, Jesus, is my soul's desire. But is there anyone you have shaped for your pleasure? The purpose to lift your name high. Here and surrender in pure adoration. I enter your courts with an offering of praise. I am your servant, come to bring you glory as a spit for the work of your hand. Now unto the Lamb who sits on the throne, be glory and honor and praise. All of creation resounds with a song. Worship and praise the Lord of Lords. Spirit now living, dwelling within me. Keep my eyes fixed ever on Jesus' face. Let not the things of this world ever sway me. I want to sits on the throne, be glory and honor and praise. All of creation resounds with a song, worship and praise, Lord of wondering if uh, how many of you have a need or a friend or a family member who has a need you're sick or you're hurting in any way just lift your hand where you are we want to pray for you today nothing strange we just want to encourage you and to love you and now I want you to look around at the hands that are raised those that have friends and if you feel led while we sing this next song to just lay a encouraging hand on the shoulder of the person who might be hurting we'll just pray right where you are and, uh, and believe the Lord to touch you. So just continue to worship, but we want to minister to you today. If you have any kind of need, just lift your hand where you are. Someone will come to you and just pray with you right where you are that God will help you with whatever your need is today. i 
to know the lasting joy, even sharing in your pain. And I surrender all to you. I lay it all down for the sake of you, my King. I'm giving you my dreams. I'm laying down my rights. I'm giving up my pride for the promise of you now. And I surrender. Join in prayer with me. Let's pray together for those that are continuing to be prayed for, but let's just, let's pray for them now. And there's a couple of other prayer needs we want to lift to the Lord as a church. Of course, uh, what's going on in Nepal, the terrible devastation there. We want to pray for our brothers and sisters in Nepal. And uh, we also want to pray for the persecuted church. Uh, nowhere at any other time has it happened where this is being catapulted onto the front and center stage for all of us to see that people who, whose only crime is that they know Jesus as their savior and they want to live out their life as a believer in him are being murdered ruthlessly. And we want to pray for those modern day martyrs. We also want to pray today, just in general for revival here in the United States of America. We're so blessed to be here, but if we're not careful, I just feel like we're on the razor's edge sometimes in terms of our just where we are and, and, and what God wants to do through our nation and our disobedience and the way we kind of seem to be pulling away from him. We want to pray for revival, for repentance, and for all the things that need to happen. So would you join in prayer with me today? I'll, I'll lead you in prayer. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we come to you as the church, part of the mighty body of Christ all over the earth. And we ask you today to minister to all of those who have been affected by the terrible earthquakes in Nepal. We lift them to you now. We know there are uh, believers in you uh, who are among the injured and the dead as well as those who did not know you. And Father, our hearts are breaking for them. We know that our brothers and sisters in the Nepali church that are connected to our church all know someone that has either died or has been affected by this horrible tragedy. And so, Father, we first of all lift up those in Nepal, and we ask that you would minister to all of the relief agencies that are converging here, all of the Christian organizations that are coming to bring food and water and shelter and building supplies and are coming to clean. And, Father, we pray that there would be unprecedented unity amongst the different groups that are coming and that they'll work together along with the indigenous people there to make a short work of what looks to be an impossible cleanup situation. But Father, with you, all things are possible. And so we ask that your grace would cover Nepal. We do thank you, Lord, that amongst the Nepali people, there are more people coming to Christ amongst the Nepali people than any other people group on the face of the earth. And so we pray, Lord, this that it would appear has, has been such a, a, a tragedy that you would turn it into a triumph. So we ask, Lord God, turn this wicked situation, this terrible 
uh, uh, hurt and pain that, that is being experienced by so many. Turn it, we pray, Father, into joy. Let their mourning be turned into laughter, their tears into joy. We're asking, Lord God, that you would work unprecedented miracles, that you would once again show yourself to be the healer and the one who provides when they're, when, in, even in the desert. You can set a table uh, for those even in the midst of that which has become an enemy to them, this earthquake. So we pray for Nepal. Bless them today and help us, Lord, when later on we receive an offering for them to, to, to do something to be a great blessing to those precious people. Father, secondly, we pray that you would do a new thing uh, um, in the persecuted church. We pray that they'd feel your loving arms wrapped around them, all of those who are brothers and sisters, mothers, fathers, people who have been recently... Uh, separated for for this lifetime anyway from from their loved ones because they have been murdered they've been martyred and father we pray that your grace would blanket all of them right now they'd feel the effects of these prayers that in this moment you would shower them with your love and your kindness and that you would show them that for those who die in the faith there is such a great reward that awaits them in heaven. And we thank you, Lord God, that you can wrap them in your arms of love and comfort them. And we pray that they would feel that today in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord God, also that you would minister to our government and other uh, governments around the world, Lord, to converge together, to be able to do something about this threat that continues to hurt your people and many other innocent people. We pray, Father, that you would bring it to a halt in Jesus' name. Father, we also pray for our nation and we repent, Lord, on behalf of the, of the sin that continues to um, besiege this nation. We pray that you'd forgive us, forgive your people. Your word says that, that the judgment begins at the house of God. And so we begin by saying, Lord, forgive us, forgive your people, Lord, for all that we have left undone and all that we have done that has displeased you. We pray for your forgiveness right in this moment in the name of Jesus. And we ask, Lord God, for repentance to be granted to all of us. And we pray, Lord, that you minister to our leaders, that you would speak and, and, and that they would hear your voice and that they would move with godly and holy fear to obey you rather than obey conventional wisdom. Lord, we're asking that you would be glorified in the United States and as part of the, the remnant of those who continue to love you and serve you, even in trying times, Father, we ask, heal our land. Heal our land, we pray. Heal our land, we ask, in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise today, Lord, and we commit these huge prayer requests to you, knowing that you are an even bigger God and you're able to help us. We give you thanks. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated today. I want to encourage you with a testimony. I'd like to invite my friend Carissa forward, who is brave enough to, to say she was willing to give a testimony. Last week, as you recall, I, I had a message about um, seeking God's face and not just his hand. And so I said, if you have a testimony next week about how God's relationship, your relationship with God has been in, enhanced by just kind of leaning into that.